Pandora will report earnings after the close on Thursday. To prepare for the release, we're going to take a look at management's guidance from last quarter and see if we can model out the guidance to meet consensus estimates. To do this, we're going to first get the guidance from last quarter's um, conference call. So if you click on the second quarter conference call, you'll see management provided guidance on the second page. And we're going to use our Pandora Media Earnings model to model out the details. If you're new to the model, please keep in mind anywhere you see a blue cell, those represent our estimates. Purple cells represent company guidance, and orange cells represent consensus estimates. If you'd like a detailed description on how the model works, please visit our website, gutenbergresearch.com. Click on the Models and Focus tab and scroll down to Pandora Media, and you'll see a full demonstration. So going back to management's guidance and our earnings model, Starting with the revenue line item, you can see that management guided revenue to be in the range of 310 to 315 million dollars. And the current consensus estimate of 313 million represents the midpoint of that range. Now to get to the 313 million, you can scroll down to the segment details and see how we ended up with that number. First, um, just keep in mind that we separate revenue between computer listener hours and mobile listener hours and we apply a revenue per thousand listener hours to each one of those two segments so for the revenue per thousand listeners we kept the growth rate consistent with what we saw from the third quarter of last year for both segments then we kept the mobile listener hour growth rate which was actually a decline of about 40 basis points in the third quarter of last year we kept that consistent for this next quarter and then we solved for the computer listener hours growth rate that was required to get back to the consensus estimate so you can see that we have a decline of 5.6 percent in the third quarter which is about consistent with the third quarter of last year next we had to come up with some assumptions on our gross margin and operating expenses if you scroll down to the gross margin, you can see that we had the percentage change from the second quarter to the third quarter about equal to the percentage change that we saw in the third quarter of last year. So we're at 51.6% for this quarter. Then for the three operating expense line items, product development costs, sales and marketing costs, and general and administrative costs, we kept those equal to the same percentage of revenue that we saw in the second quarter. Okay, now we can go back to management's guidance, and you can see that they skip down to this adjusted non-GAAP EBITDA figure, which they guide to be in the range of 25 to 30 million. So we're going to hold off on that piece for a second and get down to the individual items that they guide to. So they're saying stock-based compensation expense is expected to be 30 million dollars. And scrolling down to our non-GAAP section, you can see that we've set the stock base comp to 30 million. They also forecast depreciation and amortization expense of 6 million, which we have here. And they're assuming minimal provisions for income tax and diluted share count of 22 million. So scroll back to the income statement and you can see that we set the income tax equal to what they had for the second quarter, so just 115 million and we put in the diluted share count that they that they guided to. Now there's one other section that they gave guidance on that they actually haven't done before and that's uh, doing a non-GAAP adjustment for taxes on the non-GAAP adjustments so we included that line here inserted a row and you can see that they guide the non-GAAP effective tax rate of one to seven percent and we set ours equal to the midpoint of that range at 4%. Okay, so when we do that, we can see that our final EPS estimate comes out in line with the consensus estimate at 10 cents per share. However, if we go back to that adjusted EBITDA number, management guided it to be in the range of 25 to 30 million, and we're coming out ahead of that range at about 32 million. So now we, we can see that there might be a little bit of a dislocation between management's guidance and what the consensus estimate is. So let's see what happens if we want to get back to that midpoint of that, that range. So we can change any of the numbers, but just keep in mind that since they guided depreciation and amortization to 6 million and stock-based comp to 30 million, 
and this range would be 27, this the net loss must be much wider than, than what we have here. So we need to get to a lower or a higher net loss number. We can do that by changing OPEX, but we're just going to change the gross margin. I think it's the easiest because there's just one metric. So let's set that equal to 50.15%. And then you can see that our effective non uh, non-gap tax rate has increased. So let's bring that down to what their midpoint of their range was. 2.28% will get us there. Okay, now we're back to 4%. And you can see we're at the midpoint of management's guidance. Let's go see what the impact is on EPS. Okay, two cents a share. So, and that two cents, maybe it would be a three cent per share decline at the lower end of, of management's guidance. So overall, uh, consensus estimates seem to be relatively close to in line with management's guidance from last quarter, although it might be a little bit on the aggressive side and could cost about two or three cents per share on, on the EPS line. Please check back after the release for our, our model updates once we get the new details and the new guidance, and thanks for watching.